What's going on guys, Flickfy here with Season 2, Episode 10 of this York City Career Mode. And as you guys might have been able to tell by the intro, this is going to be the final episode of Season 2. And there's a few reasons that I wanted to do this. It's because I felt like the series was getting a little bit dull for you guys as viewers and for me especially as playing. Because we've been playing against the same teams over and over. I think we played a total of 40 something matches just in the league purely. And then we played some more matches in the cup. So we're going to simulate through a good number of matches in this episode. Be playing a few against some of the higher rated teams in this league. I mean the teams that are like first to fifth in the league. I try to play against those matches. I think Swinton Town is about fifth in the league. So I want to make sure that we get at least a draw against these guys. Because we are still first in the league but only by a couple of points. So even if we do manage to continue our good form in simulating, I wanted to make sure we could get easy wins uh, by playing the matches. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case in this Swindon Town match. They managed to get the late winner there uh, with a 2-1 shot by Gladwin. And that was a good result for Swindon. They are a pretty quality team, and they gave me some trouble throughout this season. But here we get a scouting report, and judging by the comments you guys left on the previous video, it looks like we were going to be using two of the three five-star scouts that we signed up. And I think that's a good balance and a, a good mix-up because three five-star scouts, I agree, is a bit overkill. As you guys can see, we are still having forfeit issues due to international players going and uh, playing for their national teams, which is absolutely ridiculous because we brought in three free agents at the start of the season to mitigate that problem and it still doesn't seem to fix it. Hopefully next season we, we finally manage to fix that problem and have enough depth in the team that we never run into that problem again because we dealt with it enough times for this series that I'm just sick of it. But this is the biggest match of the episode against Petersburg, the number one team against the number two team and we are only three points clear. So we have to make sure we get a win here and that will ensure that they cannot catch up to us. But we started things off really well with Aurier managing to get a header goal and you guys have been loving him lately. He seems to be scoring so many goals and really has taken over Wes Fletcher as the goal scorer for this team. We're gonna see if next season Wes Fletcher can kind of redeem himself and continue to score goals like he did in the first season for us. But Luna asked for some play time in this match and he actually played spectacularly for a I think a 59 rated player, he just scored goals and he managed to do some incredible finishes. Cody Cropper as well, a player that outshines his potential. But here's Luna again, making a perfect run and that really was the keeper's fault. But Luna picking up his second goal of the match and we had a 3-0 lead against Petersbro 70 minutes into the match. So things were looking really good and it didn't look like Petersbro would be able to catch up and even manage to get a draw against us. But they weren't giving up quite yet. Here they're going to play it into James and James plays it into Washington. He's going to play it to Fernand and he's going to finish on that near post by Cody Cropper. And they're going to continue on here late in the game, the 90th minute. We have gone ultra defensive just to hang on to that lead. Uh, but here's some scrambling inside the box. I don't know what was going on, but you can see that player on the ground really blocked off Cody Cropper, and that kept him from making the save. You guys will see from the replay. I think Cody Cropper could have had that near post covered had the player not have blocked him off, but we still managed to pick up the 3-2 victory and the full three points against Petersbro. So a good result there, and that should pretty much ensure ourselves the first place finish, which is ultimately the goal for this team. And we're going to continue to sign some more players. I felt like we had the budget to uh, splash the cash a little bit and sign some players and figure out if they're going to be worth it later. Next season, I'm going to be a little bit more picky on who I sign because we're going to be a little bit more limited in our transfer budget. But right now, of course, we did have the financial takeover and might as well use the funds while we can. We continue to get some average results, a draw against MK Dons, and we're going to get into the final match that we're going to be playing in this episode. We're four points clear of Petersbro and this is the second to last match of the season meaning that if we get a win that will ensure our place as the number one team in the league but things didn't start off so well for us we managed to go down one to nil to a goal by I think it was Johnson but we're going to continue on and that guy goes complete Fus Roda on him and he's even got the hair for it that's our free agent Felcher and he's a bit of a legend uh, you know he's just a boss in the center defensive mid position and I just love using him uh, but we do manage to pick up a penalty there in the 50th minute. It's going to be Wes Fletcher to take it. And he's going to put it off to the right. Keeper almost got a hand to it. But Wes Fletcher able to make the save. And he actually punched Aurier right in the gut. 
Rest in peace, Aurier. Rest in peace. Um, but moving on, Morales is going to get a 77th minute opportunity. He's going to put that one away. Our free agents doing work this season. And it's been really incredible stuff. But moving in to the final minutes of the game, we just had to hang on to the lead and we would get that first place finish. We were just passing the ball around the back. Peters bro weren't challenging us and we won the match. Well, there it is. That's the moment that confirms that they've won the promotion. They're up a division for next season. After a long, hard fought campaign, they've got their reward here. The spectators are absolutely thrilled. They've never seen anything like this before in this ground. So yeah, guys, that is going to be the end of the match, and we managed to win 2-1, to one, so we did secure the league title. And I was a little bit disappointed that there wasn't a better celebration. Sure, the commentary was pretty cool, and uh, whoever that commentator is, I always forget their name. Uh, he was pretty excited about it, but we're going to get into the final stuff of the season. Uh, promoting our youth academy players, all that kind of stuff. And here you can see we've got a couple of players in the youth academy, and they finally have some de decent potential. So we're going to look to sign them all up, give them the future first team player roles, and I'll be showcasing them a little bit more in the first episode of season three. It's pretty exciting to say that. Um, but yeah, they're actually some pretty decent players, and I think they might actually be able to fit into the first team, especially that center mid I think it's Carlon who we who we signed up. And then there's Cone Bruins. He is our uh, scouted future star player at the center back position. And then we're going to get into the contract stuff, the the stuff, the loan to buy offer stuff. And Declan John is going to be adding the team as long as he does accept the contract offer. And he does accept the contract offer. So Declan John is going to be our left back for the future years to come. So I'm really excited about that. And here is some statistics for you guys. Here you can see Fletcher and Aurier and they finish as the number two and number three spot. Fletcher getting the most assists in the league and Cody Cropper actually managed to get the most clean sheets in the league. So very exciting stuff. And I'm going to end the episode off with a final squad report for this season. So you guys can see some of the growth. I think Milanov actually managed to grow the most this season alongside Gruzo, but we didn't really play him that much. So it was a pretty incredible that Gruzo managed to grow plus four despite hardly getting any play time. Uh, but he's a pretty cool player and he kind of fulfilled his role and uh, played pretty well when he had to. But West Fletcher also going up plus four. So just some incredible growth by our players this season. And of course the board said that we had an amazing season. Overall though, I was really happy with this team and I hope you guys have enjoyed this second season. If you guys are ready for season three, let me know down in the comment section below and I'll try to get that episode out as soon as I can. As well as let me know some players that you want me to go after in the future season. I'll be honest with you guys. I think we're gonna have about 5 million in the budget. If that's a fair amount, then let me know down in the comment section below. But I'm going to sign off right there, guys. Hope you have enjoyed the episode. If you did, do me a favor, leave a like down below, subscribe if you're new around here. And until next time, this has been Flakeify. We'll be talking to you all again soon. Jumping forward a couple years, Dybala grows into a 92-rated player with a value of 70 million. That's a growth of 65.7 million from the start of career mode. That is just some insane growth, and I'm fairly sure that is...